I was very um, impressed by the Android system at first. Sure, the, the iOS on the on the iPhone is the best in my opinion, by far, and it's the most pleasant to use, and it has the fewest disruptions and the fewest crashes to this day. Things improve over time. It's the easiest one for me to navigate around. I feel less, I don't know, imprisoned and trying to figure things out all the time. But I use the Android quite a bit so that I will be familiar with it and what its good points are and its good features that maybe we want an iPhone someday. So when it first started, a very good friend of mine, Andy Rubin, is really is in charge of the Android program. And I looked at it very favorably. But what I'm seeing is it's become so fractured. It's become so much like Microsoft of the old days. The operating system as a platform, many different hardware vendors, a very difficult system to keep up. And then over time, the operating systems and things like drivers have to appeal to the least common denominator and try to make as many pieces of the hardware out there unaffected. Basically, keep the legacy software working and things like that. And I'm seeing that happening in the Android world, and it's a very unpleasant experience from the past. And I don't, so I'm not expecting the Android to get into my heart the way iOS does. Um, Steve Jobs is medical. I mean, Steve Jobs has had medical issues. He wishes to have it. And I just wish him the best of luck in whatever decisions he makes is right for him. And I'm very happy that he sounds very good these days. I, I think the iPad is just a glorious piece of computer at a low price. I would like very easy printing, easy attachments to other, other peripherals. I would like internet printing. And I, I can't add an awful lot to it. You know, now we're used to it in our normal computers. We can run any application anyone writes, whereas it's kind of guarded on the Android. And there are programs that I like to run on my other computers that I can't. I wish I could run on the iPad. And also, I have easy some easy options in programming languages on other computers. And I grew up as a nerd, a geek. I loved to program anything I could. Solve a little problem that's on my head. A puzzle in the newspaper, whatever. All the time I want to do this. And I can do it a lot easier on my MacBook Pro than on the iPad. And I wish it were built into my iPhone. I haven't looked intensively like a business person would into the, all the other tablets that have come out. Not one of them interested me because the iPad is so good and at the right cost. For example, the Galaxy Pad came out and I went into um, my local stores that sold it and I asked them, oh, how well is it selling? Oh, it's not selling at all. Uh, maybe just your store. No, we talked to all our friends in the other stores. It's not selling because for the same price, just about the same price, they can buy the iPad with much bigger screen. Which would you buy? And I really haven't seen the competition to the iPad yet. Um, so I think its its lead has now increased from maybe one year to an extra year, two years, three years ahead of where the competition will be. As you say, the iPad changes everything. Well, you know what, if you were used to using a computer in its modern ways, or obviously an iPhone, the iPad was another representation of it. It was a different input structure a different type of dimensions, a different viewing angle. It was a little different than computers before in terms of the human input and output, and that's the way things change. The mouse changed things just as significantly. All of a sudden, you had a mouse instead of commands to cause the cursor or keys to move the cursor around. Um, I think that in the future, we're going to get even more towards natural voice commands doing almost everything. Voice recognition has taken so many strides and gotten to a point that I really never thought it would get to as far as understanding the what I'm really saying and what I'm meaning. And I always find that I prefer on my iPhone, not the iPad, but on the iPhone, I prefer speaking a command. And I'll choose whether I'm using my iPhone or my Android, my Droid X, based upon which commands it accepts by voice because with voice, I don't have to think. Computer technology is supposed to do the thinking for us. And 
I don't have to think how I'm going to say something, what order I'm going to put the words, which words I'm going to choose, because the, the language, the spoken language, has to be very robust. So I think that's really more of the future. I also think eventually all these computer devices are going to have vision, but that's off your question of education. As far as education, computers replaced books a long time ago. And they could present little examples to learn mathematics. That if you were forced to sit through the drills or you enjoyed sitting through the drills, you could learn from it. You could learn a bunch of history and answer a lot of questions. The computer now could grade your questions and tell you no, go back and read it again, try it again. So the learning was much better than a book. It was an, an, uh, it was a, an interactive book and it became animated. It became fun, things that are pleasurable. But I noticed in my time of teaching for eight years that it didn't draw the students once it didn't have a human quality. The more human quality it had, it would draw students for a year. But they'd get used to it. And it wasn't quite replacing a, a human teacher that seemed to have a heart and care about the, the students. And I think that's in the future. That's going to come. These things are going to understand the, the voice of the students. They're going to have cameras that notices facial expressions and that sort of thing and treats them more like a real person. They're going to run in, oh, I want to talk to, um, to you know, Android 5 today, my best friend. I think I see that in the future. And then we can get to the point that a classroom of 30 students right now has a one teacher teaching 30 students, and a bunch of them are hiding out. They're not paying attention. They're drifting off. They're daydreaming. Teacher calls on them for an answer, and oh, they don't know what was going on. And, and, that, and that sort of lack of attention to education, once you love your computer, and it is your teacher, it's your best friend and your teacher, a teacher can never fail one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be a big day for education. The iPad is an incredible step in that direction because so many times schools have wanted the computers that are more easy to use, more personal, more intuitive, more like people, and that's Apple, the Apple platform. But it was always a little too expensive. Now with, with the um, iPad, all of a sudden, the way you can price out staffing your computer district with so many thousands of this model computer, so many thousands of, of another, of maybe um, some towers for video editing purpose classes, and you know, and distribute them, oh, the economics falls into place, everything's kind of greener, it's nicer, you carry it with you, something you carry with you, you feel personal. I mean, I could go on and on, but the, the, I think the uh, major, I thought at first the major market for the iPad was education, but I think it's really just the masses of people that want computers simpler. I'm glad to, glad to meet Apple lovers always. When I was in Brazil, once before in my life, I actually ran into somebody who said there were no iPhone 3s here yet, or 3Gs. And I had one, and I gave him my own phone just to say that I left the first, or at least one of the first, Apple 3Gs in Brazil. I was so proud of myself. Um, oh gosh, uh, Caracas. I love to go to campus parties wherever they are. I've fallen in love with this. I make a lot of personal sacrifices to be able to go to, to campus parties um, compared to normal events that I'm invited to. So, of course, if I receive an invitation from the Canvas Party people, I would very, very much love to be in Caracas and help make it a great event because it's people like me. Google, yeah, right, is Google, is Google the, the modern-day Apple? Well, Apple had a big, huge founding with a couple of young people that didn't have any business experience, didn't have any money, and Google was founded very similarly. You know, from these young, it was one of those young startups that came out of nowhere and became so huge and it went public. It became a public corporation and its value was so high. And I don't know, I think Apple's well above Google in capitalization and in profits and other things right now. But Google is, is a big contender. Google's play, I think, is out there on, boy, everything's going to be on the cloud someday and all the benefits of the cloud come to everybody. Well, they don't come to a few people like me because I don't get broadband at my home. And uh, we don't have enough. We don't have enough strong laws like we had in the days of telephones when there was a monopoly in the United States, and you could not own, use, or purchase your own telephone. We had laws that they had to send phone wires to every single house in their geographic territory, but they don't have to send broadband there today. And I'm, who do I think is going to be a winner of sorts? I don't ever think of it that way. Google's doing a lot of great things. Apple's doing a lot of great things. As far as Android versus iPhone, I wish Android weren't here. I don't think it adds better phones to the party. Android, though, is very needed. In the United States, we have a very uh, 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 problematic carrier, AT&T, that everyone complains about drop calls, including me, if you live in San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, certain other very, very popular, populous places. Um, it doesn't work well. When you drive, it doesn't 
it doesn't cover as much of the country. And our other carrier, Verizon, did not have the iPhone. Verizon was the better network of the United States. I always have to carry Verizon phones. My Androids are usually Verizon phones. I carry Verizon MiFi's to, to, to help my iPhones when they need the help. And it has paid off over and over. I can't tell you how many times I'm in a hotel and the internet fails. I bring out my little Verizon MiFi's that share the internet. So Verizon's going to have the iPhone soon, thank God. But for a long time, we left that hole open for the Android to come in and have huge amounts of sales in the United States. And that was really their kickoff. I think it was a mistake of Apple's that let them in. And I'm sort of sorry to sort of sorry to hear. I mean, I have Androids, and I like things about the Android. There are some things I use it for because I can speak commands into it that aren't the commands my iPhone understands, and I like to speak. Networks need some protection. That compromise you speak of will be easy to find. A long time ago in the United States, all the landline phones were one phone company, AT&T, and they refused to allow a company Carter phone to attach their own device, an answering machine or something, to the lines. They said, oh, it could bring our entire network of the whole country down. And that was just basically a lie. And any technical person knows it's a lie. You publish specs just like an operating system publishes its API attachments. You publish specs, you connect with these voltages, and you will not harm us. You'll be the same as our own equipment. That was all that was needed. And the courts ruled against them and broke up that, that monopoly. It was very poor practice you know, to use your monopoly position to, um, to try to say, oh, others, we, can't, we aren't going to let others connect because they might endanger us. Yes, in the software of the cell phone networks, a user should not be able to interact with how that network adapts itself and switches cells and, and such things at all. But that doesn't mean they can't write other apps that just do useful things over those networks. Um, that should all be treated equally. And the, the, the young people, the, the small people, that just have an idea on their own that they want to try should never be restricted or deprioritized just because somebody else is paying more money. That's one thing for sure. And um, cellular phones have changed our, our whole application life. Our way of using computers has changed. I do things that I could have easily had programs on my desktop computer to do, but they didn't make any sense unless I'm carrying them in my car pocket. And they know where I am, maybe. And they know who I am. And things just happen so automatically that I really want. Our lives are changing so much because of that. And it's basically mostly over cellular. I, I know all my reasons for creating projects back in those days. Every job I embarked on was an A-plus effort, A-plus result, including the Apple II. I thought back many, many, many a time, and over and over and over, I came up with, I knew people suggested, maybe you could have done this one thing different or this other thing different. One after another after another, I analyzed my own thinking, and it was exactly right for the time. Now, because I was a different person with a different background, I chose to write my basic software very, very fast. And I left out the floating point. I designed it with floating point, and then I left that out just to get it done the soonest so I'd be well known like Bill Gates for writing a basic. And when we went to, when we actually produced the, the Apple II computer and sold it, I had floating point routines in the ROM, and I had my basic, but I hadn't incorporated them. And I regret that because it caused us to license Microsoft Basic. And in later years, that hurt us because we depended on it for all of our income from the Apple II. Company in the world, large company, with a lot of carefully hired, some of the best of the thinkers in technology, can always be credible. And I mean, look, Microsoft has the Kinect. So, and you don't necessarily know in advance where these leads are going to come from. They, were, they weren't predicting that the Wii was going to be as big a thing as, as um, compared to the Sony PlayStation when it came out. So I definitely don't write Microsoft off. And I think that after a period of time, the world is sort of favoring, for a lot of reasons, the Apple more and more. The tra we're growing and, and Windows was kind of shrinking in popularity. I think out of that, that might encourage Microsoft to come back with some incredible um, results.